What's a sensation that you're unsure if other people experience? Sometimes when I'm breathing, as I often do, I get this sharp feeling in my chest that I can only describe as feeling like something gets caught in my chest. Usually a few painful deep breaths will make it go away. I've told my doctors, and they say they've never heard of anything like that before. So, I'm not a doctor, but WebMD tells me that this is a telltale symptom of precordial catch syndrome, which is described as a sharp pain in the left side of your chest near your heart. It's not a serious condition, but it does feel like you're getting stabbed in the chest, which is, you know, concerning. They typically get worse with breathing, and they occur within a small area, and the pain is not due to the heart. So if you think you're having a heart attack because your chest hurts, maybe it's just precordial catch syndrome. Sometimes, I get the feeling in the back of my neck accompanied by a weird sound, kind of like the sound of bubbles and sparkling water. It doesn't really bother me since it lasts less than a second, but I wish I could describe what it actually sounds like. This thread is full of people having mysterious things finally explained to them, so I'm going to give it a shot. My eyelashes hurt, specifically the follicles. It's the same kind of pain like when you have a loose tooth, and it actually does seem to happen when the eyelash is, quote, loose. Like, it's twisted around and pointing the wrong way. I have yet to meet anyone else who experiences this. My doctor's only suggestion was to start washing my eyes daily with baby shampoo, and it's reduced it substantially, but not completely. It sucks. It's more of a lack of sensation than anything else, I guess. But maybe every few months, I get this feeling that everything is hollow and far away. Like anything I want to do is meaningless. Anything I hear people say sounds like an echo, and even the thoughts in my head sound emotionless and distant. It usually passes after five minutes, but I've stopped asking my friends whether they know that feeling because of the looks I get. Sounds like ennui to me. The state of feeling disinterested in one's surroundings, having nothing to do, or feeling that life is dull. Sometimes I get sudden weird feelings of, I absolutely cannot be here in this place. This place is wrong. It's this intense sensation slash thought that happens randomly. No, there's no apparent danger, just a weird feeling or sensation of absolute, I can't be here, this is wrong, I can't be here, I need to not be here. I don't have intense social anxiety or fear of public places or anything like that. It's happened since I was little. Not sure what triggers it, and it goes away after a few minutes. I get panic attacks pretty often, and that sounds like it to me. It's not for the same reason, like, I don't get anxious in public spaces. It's mostly an internal thing, but... Panic attacks can happen for any reason at any time. I don't know how to describe it other than to say I can flex something inside my ears and it creates this deep rumbling sound in my head. Edit, just woke up and holy heck, RIP inbox. I've been able to do this as long as I can remember. When I was a kid, I used to pretend that doing this activated my latent psychic abilities. I actually can do this too, and it turns out that there's a subreddit called r slash ear rumblers assemble. YouTube comments, if you're an ear rumbler, get in there and tell me all about it. I once saw a patient that had visual snow, which is a rare visual disorder where you see constant static slash snow patterns over your normal vision. She spent most of her life thinking it was normal, but it didn't get in the way of her normal day-to-day -day life, which is a relief. Just to clarify, visual snow needs to be constant and will usually have other symptoms like visual trailing, association with migraines, or problems with night vision as I understand it. It can also affect one's quality of life, so if you just experience it at night, then it is likely just Conan Rod, quote, noise, which is completely normal. If you see it only when looking at blue skies, etc., then that is called blue field entoptic phenomenon, which someone kindly posted below, and this can be associated with visual snow as well. If you believe you have visual snow, please see a doctor or optometrist and advise them that you think you may have a condition that is called visual snow. Just to add, my patient believed this to be normal as one of her family members also experienced it, and also believed it to be normal, but vision is a funny thing, and I guess we never really have discussions about what we see. Sometimes when I'm trying to sleep, my hands feel too large and my body feels all out of proportion. I can't get comfortable, and I have to turn on the lights and look at my hands for a bit for it to go away. I know that sounds weird, but it's the only way I can describe it. Bizarre. Edit. I woke up this morning with my inbox exploding, and I'm so glad that I'm not the only one here. And I love Pink Floyd, and I can't believe I didn't make the comfortably numb connection to Alice in Wonderland syndrome until now. I'm listening to it as I type this.
When I hear someone in a public place describe their day or talk about something very specific to their life, I get an overwhelming sense of detachment from the world. The first thought that goes through my mind is, I'll never know anything about this person's life and they are sitting three feet away from me. And I zone out for a few seconds. I think sonder is the term for this. From the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows, noun, the realization that each random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as their own, populated with their own ambitions, friends, routines, worries, and inherited craziness, an epic story that continues invisibly around you like an anthill sprawling deep underground, with elaborate passageways to thousands of other lives that you'll never know existed, in which you might appear only once, as an extra sipping coffee in the background, as a blur of traffic passing on the highway, as a lighted window at dusk. My sister and I call it tickle thumb, but it's when you're laughing too much and try to pick something up or press something with your finger and thumb but have no strength. Of course, it makes us laugh harder and prolong the tickle thumb. Good luck trying to explain it to someone who doesn't know it, though. I see unfathomably large objects sometimes when I close my eyes to go to sleep. They're random shapes, but usually a big sphere. They're so large it's overwhelming, but I've kind of learned to keep my eyes closed and let them appear instead of opening my eyes to make them disappear. Edit. Whoa. The first time I remember experiencing this was when I was a kid and sick with an ear infection. I was half awake and having nightmares. It still happens to me now. I'm 25, but I haven't found the quote trigger. Last time it happened, I was drunk. That everyone is always playing this game that they won't snap out of. Instead of just being themselves and saying what they feel, they act like they're in a play or in a chess game or something. And there's always this weird layer of separation between who they actually are and what they're allowing you to interface with. Even with people I feel close to, I've tried to have conversations about this and it still feels like they just refuse to snap out of it. I can't tell if other people are also acutely aware of a lack of candidness in everyone around them all the time. And they also get tired of it but play along because everyone else is, or if people are just really like that. I think a lot about what people are like when they're alone, and what exactly the differences are between that person and the person I get to interact with. It's strange to me that even with a really candid conversation about it, and with what seems like open acknowledgement of the phenomena by the person I'm talking to, they still don't feel truly present. There are only a few people I've ever met in my life who I actually felt were completely genuine without any facade. So I wonder if other people have noticed that, or if I'm just delusional. Hey, hope you're enjoying the video. Remember to drop a like and leave a comment. And subscribe to Am I the Genius and Am I the Jerk, linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Whenever I'm in a room where it's mostly dark, but there is some light, and I focus on whatever, ground, wall, nothing, my eyes start to darken the entire room until I basically have the view of my eyes closed, but my eyes are open. Edit. Okay, so I can see a lot of other people experience this. One thing, though, is the fact that the outline of objects glows really high at some point. Sometimes it's not even objects. My eyes would focus on whatever, and when it's dark, it starts, quote, glowing in phases, as in the ground gets really bright and then dims back down. Repeat. I get shooting pains on both sides of my lower jaw, under my ears, when I start eating anything sweet. The only other person I know who gets it is my dad, so it must be genetic. That could be a partial subluxation of the sublingual salivary gland and also the submandibular salivary gland that flex and swell when you juice your mouth way too quickly with saliva and spit for digestion. I assume it's when you've not had anything to eat for a while? I can't believe I read all that medical stuff on my first take. Sometimes when I'm lying down, I feel as though my whole body is swinging from side to side really quickly. When I'm tired, I can kind of control it, but no one ever knows what I'm talking about. Hey, I get this, and I actually got diagnosed. It might not be the exact same, but I have benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. It's basically vertigo induced from lying in a certain position. For some people, it could be very intense. It actually stops me from sleeping sometimes. Usually I can stop it by focusing really hard or by opening my eyes and looking at something. Mine is caused by crystals that developed in the balance part of my ear. You have this fluid, and basically this tells your brain how your body is oriented. That's why if you spin around a lot, you get dizzy. So these crystals can become dislodged and start swirling around, causing your brain to think you're spinning. If people are struggling with this, there's a specific set of movements you could do that is supposed to stop it. It happens pretty rarely, 
but I'll be laying down somewhere, and then I start getting this feeling of combined sleepiness slash warmth that seems to make everything seem better and lets me appreciate the smaller things. Like how soft the thing I'm laying on is, or how the sun is peeking through the window, or how nice it is to just… exist. It doesn't last very long, and it only happens when I haven't been doing or thinking about stressful things in a while. Edit. It isn't just happiness. It's like… advanced happiness. I don't know. It's hard to describe now. About once a month, I get this really weird mental feeling. It's really hard to explain, but I guess it's almost as if everything has become too real? Like life before was a video game I was playing or in, and now that game is real. Coupled with not feeling emotions like I think I should. And I worry sometimes. I have that too. Sometimes I'm doing some light chore. Cleaning a table, brushing teeth, taking a quick shower, etc. And I quote, snap awake for a brief moment. Especially if I'm looking at a mirror. It's bizarre. It's like turning off autopilot. This is me. I'm alive. I breathe and eat. Someone birthed me. I've changed lives with my very existence. I have a body that responds to my actions to the point where I don't even notice it. People I've known have died of natural causes. Among those lines. Then I just forget about it. It's happened less than a dozen times in my life. Sounds like depersonalization, derealization. I have it too. It's scary. I regularly feel like I'm just faking my way through life. That all my supposed job skills aren't really there, and I've just been lucky that I haven't been caught out yet. I'm fairly sure this isn't true, but I can't help but feel it. That's what we call imposter syndrome, baby! As a creative, I feel this. It really can feel like you're just faking your way through everything. Making videos, drawing, anything like that, and thinking that it's just not good enough. Obviously it's not true, as people will gladly tell you that the things you're making are great, and there is genuine work and technique being put in. But it feels like it's for nothing. It's always that strive for perfection. I physically feel pain whenever I hear silverware being moved around and clinking together. Like, I'd literally prefer to leave the room than hear that. Nothing else makes me feel this way, but it makes me be careful when I or anyone around me unloads or loads a dishwasher. Sounds like misophonia to me. By concentrating on the area just behind my forehead, I can get a wave of sensation pulsating from that spot backwards through my head and to the base of my neck. The longer I concentrate, the more intense it can get. I know one other person who has described the same thing. I'd love to hear of others with this and if they have explored it much. Also, if I shine really bright lights straight onto my closed eyelids, I feel a little bit of inexplicable joy and clarity. Edit, not ear rubble slash tensor timpani. I have no auditory sensations with it, and the sensation emanates particularly from my forehead. Pretty sure not ASMR, based on descriptions of it and the fact that there is nothing else that causes the sensation to occur for me. Also not free zone, because, well, I can do that voluntary too, and I know the difference. That falling feeling you get sometimes when you're laying in bed, then you flail around a little bit trying to stop yourself. Called a hypnic jerk. As I understand it, it happens when your body is falling asleep but your mind is still awake, and the feeling of falling unconscious triggers a flight or fight response. When I see a bus pass or when I'm on a train and get to my station, I always think about getting on that bus or staying on the train and seeing how far I can go. Just not tell anyone, not answer the phone, not show up to work, and keep going. Sometimes, relatively rarely, I will go into the third person for just a moment. I will see myself doing whatever I'm doing for no more than a second as if I was playing a video game. I know it's not 100% synced up though because I fell down the stairs the last time it happened. Oftentimes, if I've been laying down for a prolonged period of time, when I stand up really quickly, I'll feel a head rush and then go totally blind for around 5 seconds. I've had people relate with the head rush, but I have yet to find someone who has experienced the sudden blindness too. If I've been sitting around for a few days, I sometimes get an uncomfortable feeling in my muscles, leg muscles especially. There's a burning restlessness that drives me to get up off my butt and at least move around some. It doesn't matter how lazy I might prefer to be. My body says I've got to get up and move. I've never heard anyone else talk about the sensation, and I'd like to know what it's called. Restless leg syndrome. I get it when my body wants to go to bed, actually. Makes me get up off the couch and go to sleep. Maybe not a sensation so much, but for some reason, music can make me really… emotional. For some reason, sometimes I'll be singing along to a song, even something funny like a parody, and I won't be able to get through it without choking up. 
if it was just really sad songs I could understand, but like I said, it'll even happen with like Weird Al songs. I mean, thinking about how long it must have taken to get that take on Hardware Store where he's listing out all of the things that they have at the Hardware Store, I'd probably cry too. Some advertisements make me deeply sad, especially for irrelevant products like soaps or razors. It's all the meaningless promotions on the packaging to make the product seem more appealing. Maybe it's all the work I know was put into something that 99.9% .9 of people are never going to read. I don't know. It's happened to me for as long as I can remember. This happens every so often with myself, but I feel like I'm just reliving my life through memories. It's like I'm telling someone the story of my life and I'm recounting all of it. It's a weird but interesting sensation. I think this is pretty common, but I haven't seen it mentioned yet. While driving, sometimes I'll have the urge to ram the car in front of me and or swerve into oncoming traffic. It's not an urge to off myself, just an inexplicable craving of wanting to smash into something. I kind of equate this to the feeling of wanting to jump when near the edge of a steep cliff, which I know is a relatively common phenomenon. Yeah, this is called Call of the Void, or more commonly, Intrusive Thoughts. Which, by the way, small rant, I never liked how people said that they let their intrusive thoughts win when it comes to something as mundane as, like, sticking a hot dog in between two slices of bread instead of a bun. No, intrusive thoughts are about stabbing your mom with a knife while you're preparing dinner together, or something akin to that. It's intrusive because it's unwarranted, and can make you feel like an awful person just for thinking it. But they're not always based on some Freudian desire to go goblin mode. They're just your brain thinking a little too much. It's really nothing to worry about. After a 24-hour alcohol bender, during the hangover, I'll hear pitches about a quarter step sharper than they really are. I have absolute pitch, and am now sober following a gnarly ride with alcohol. Of all the hangover systems I got, quote, the sharps were the most unsettling. Dehydration of your inner ear fluid would be my guess. Changes the shape of the ear canal until your body can replenish it, so everything would sound different. This has actually happened to me before. I don't have perfect pitch or absolute pitch or anything like that, but I think one time I was either sick or I just woke up and my ear was feeling pretty off. It's like whenever I would whistle, I would hear like multiple tones over each other. It's like I was harmonizing with myself, but in the worst way possible. And listening to music sucked because it was like the song sounded awful when I knew that it sounded alright before. Thankfully it never happened to me again, but that was weird. It doesn't happen so much to me in adulthood, but I swear that when I was a kid, homesickness was a distinct, visceral, nearly physical emotion. For instance, say I was 6 and staying at my cousin's house for the weekend without my mom. There would be quiet moments, maybe near bedtime, where it wasn't just, I miss my mom, I wonder what she's doing. Rather, it would be a potent, melancholic ache where I was acutely aware that I was not at home and my mom wasn't there, and it would overcome me out of nowhere. I had no more control over it than if I suddenly felt chilly. I thought everyone experienced this, homesickness, as its own separate and extreme emotion, but I remember mentioning it to a friend in middle school, and she had no idea what I was talking about. What's really weird is that from time to time, I'll get the homesick pain feeling again in situations where it makes no sense. I will already be at home, my family will be there, etc. Then I drink water, and that fixes it. Go figure. This is your daily reminder to drink water today. Noticed it when I was a kid. Sometimes there are moments when I touch a rough or really dry surface and I get a cold shiver up my spine plus goosebumps. Some examples would be concrete, brick, or the cloth seats in my car. It is so odd because it doesn't happen all the time. Another example is if I've just finished washing my hands and they are really dry, maybe after using a crappy soap, and then I reach for something in my jean pocket. Nobody I mentioned it to seems to have experienced it before. adhd -er slash fellow sensory issue haver here. I relate to this a lot, actually. I can't stand certain sensations. I have an anti-ASMR response whenever I hear whispers into really sensitive microphones. My eyes start watering, strangely enough. Some fabrics feel really bad to me, especially if it's anything wooly against my dry skin. It tends to feel prickly. I also can't stand using a manual toothbrush. It gives me bad tingles. I've used an electric one for several years now. But those are my quirks. If you've had any weird sensory experiences, what are yours? Let me know in the comments. I know I'm not the only person that experiences this, but I frequently have exploding head syndrome, usually after long periods of irregular sleep. I work rotating shifts. When I lay down to go to sleep, it feels like a huge rush of energy and a cacophony of voices from people who I recently talked to fills my entire head. 
It only lasts a few seconds, but it makes me feel extremely anxious and paranoid after. Sometimes, I feel like I'm dissociating when it happens too. I'm not as freaked out by it now since I know what it is, but the first few times were really bad experiences. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.